Good evening. It's good to connect with you again on this beautiful Sunday evening. I hope you've had a good day and that you have set aside a time to worship and praise our Lord. I was reading earlier the scriptures that are uh, in the common lectionary assigned for this week. Now the common lectionary is uh, a system, I will say, uh, that has been around for uh, decades, if not centuries, uh, that have assigned particular scriptures from the Old Testament, from the Psalms, from the Gospel readings, and from the letters and other writings in the New Testament. And there are a set of scriptures for every week for, for, the, for the year, and they are together in a three-year cycle. And it just so happens, as I was reading those this morning, um, I came across what was the assigned psalm for this week. And this psalm is one that is perhaps one of the, the top ten of uh, readings of all of the scriptures, uh, one that we remember, one that we uh, most people or many people know, one that is recited perhaps as much as uh, John 3.16. It is a beautiful, beautiful scripture that really acts like a prayer. I shared with you a couple of days ago that one of my favorite writers and theologians who has now gone to glory is Dallas Willard. And he wrote a book a few years back uh, before he died, and it's called A Life Without Lack. A Life Without Lack. And first of all, I want to encourage you, if you're a uh, member of Amazon or you have a way to order that book online, I would highly, highly encourage you to do that. Again, it's by Dallas Willard. But it's interesting and so provoking to me, the words he writes there, that he talks about that for decades he has used the 23rd Psalm as a way to open his day with prayer, to remember who his shepherd is to remember who is the voice that he is to follow and that he is to give himself over to every moment of every day. And so that's what I wanna just share with you a little bit today, uh, going through some lines of that uh, passage of scripture to help us get maybe a deeper uh, meaning, a deeper connection to what the psalmist writes. So of course that psalm opens with, the Lord is my shepherd. So in other words, I am not in charge of my own life. I don't have to make all the decisions of my own life. I can actually listen to God, help me to discern, help me to figure next steps out, that I have one who will lead me and guide me. Uh, when we acknowledge Christ as our shepherd, God uh, really come to earth. Um, we can give up our own kingdoms and instead live into the kingdom of God. Then the, the psalmist writes, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, when we are uh, in someone else's care, um, that's our natural response, that we can trust our God for everything, to, to supply our needs, to do our part, of course, uh, but to never leave us alone to fend for ourselves. He then says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside the still waters. Well, what does that mean if we are metaphorically the sheep? Well, if we lie down in green pastures, what that says is um, we have the availability of food all around us, right, to graze. But because we are so secure, that we are so um, intimately linked with the shepherd, with the Lord God and Jesus Christ, that we are filled, filled to capacity and that we are not thirsty um, to make our own way in the world, that our thirst has been quenched, our spiritual um, soul has been nourished, and that we can rest besides those still waters in that lush green grass because we have a shepherd that cares for us. The psalmist continues, he restores my soul. You know, how many of us um, don't need restoration of our souls, don't need a new way to live that confronts our brokenness and mends us back together. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. The effect of God restoring our souls 
is that then we walk in a new righteousness or an uprightness to where we continue to live in to the people that we were created to be, that we live our lives for the good, good shepherd, for God in the person of Christ. While the psalmist clearly knows about life's dangers, uh, and we are living that in a very real way right now, um, that, the, that the, the psalmist can still say with conviction um, that, he, that he or she will have no fear of any evil. Why? Because the shepherd is with me. The shepherd is with me. Do we have concern over this COVID virus? Absolutely. And do we have a part to play um, of listening and heeding the advice of those people who God has given gifts and talents to help us? Absolutely. And that's part of being in his care, um, to, to link together with people who have more knowledge than, than we have, but all the while knowing and believing that that knowledge and that wisdom has come from Almighty God. And then uh, the psalmist speaks, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Well, you know, when you think about a rod and a staff, and especially as a shepherd would use um, in real life, you'll know that a rod and a staff uh, represents the shepherd's strength and protective care. In this safe place, we really don't have anything to fear. We're at liberty to enjoy life, to enjoy one another, to respect the individuality of others, and to seek their best all the while seeking our best as well. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Well, as Dallas would say, is that yes, the Lord uh, continues to prepare a banquet for us. And I'm not talking about a real food banquet, but that's the metaphor that's being used here. And that uh, with him leading and guiding us, that we will experience just everything we need set before us. But Dallas would also say that because Jesus has called us to love our enemies, that we wouldn't allow them to just stand before us and watch us feed and watch us eat, but that we would pull up a chair for them and invite them to sit down and to come to the shepherd and to know of his bounty and goodness. The next phrase is, you anoint my head with oil. You know, in Old Testament times, to be anointed was to, set up, to be set apart. To be anointed meant that, that God was giving you um, a new purpose and a new mission. And you know, as we live into following that shepherd's voice, we come uh, closer and closer to continuing to live the mission of Jesus Christ and to love God and to love neighbor as ourself. Then uh, the abundance of God's provision uh, rings out from the psalmist's pen when he says, my cup is full. Wait a minute, is that really what it says? No, of course not. It doesn't say my cup is full. It says my cup runneth over. Um, the cup of blessing just overflows. And that's a beautiful thing when you think about our reach into the world, that our blessings and the way we serve and love and give and are generous, that they just flow out of us into other people's lives. You know, this is a description of the eternal life that is available to us in the kingdom of the heavens when the psalmist ends like this, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So here's the thing, a lot of times, uh, or I would say most times in my experience, the 23rd Psalm is used at funerals and memorial services because while they are very appropriate in that place, they are also appropriate for us to claim and to believe and hold on to every single day of our lives. And why is that? Because when the psalmist uh, says that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, you know, his house is, is not just beyond our deaths, but it is here um, when people uh, listen to that shepherd's voice, when they heed his calling, when they, uh, being, when they are on mission together to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, that the kingdom comes down and touches upon the earth time after time again. 
So we don't want to ever think that the scripture was only meant until after we've taken our last breath, but it truly is exactly what Dallas Willard says. It is a prayer that we should open our day with and to remember who is leading and guiding us to hear his voice and to closely follow. So now I want to invite you to speak these words with me. Now I'll be reading this or really praying this from the King James Version because the, the old English language of, of the King James is absolutely beautiful, especially for this 23rd Psalm. And if you don't know the whole thing, that's okay. I would um, encourage you to memorize it in any um, uh, translation of the scriptures. But where you hear me praying it, even if you don't know the whole thing by heart, Whenever that you feel like you know what the next word is coming, you're pretty sure you know because you've heard it before, um, just speak that aloud. Uh, God will honor your seeking and your searching, and he will honor if you're just speaking um, with, a, with your next breath what you think and hope to be that next word. And so now if you will join with me, we will pray together tw Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He, he guides me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thanks be to God, our good shepherd, that came into the world in human flesh, Jesus the Christ. May he continue to be your shepherd, or may he be your shepherd for the very first time right now in this moment to claim him for the place that he belongs, the place that he truly is, and that is the God of the universe. So I pray that you will rest your head tonight, not fearing anything, but trusting in the one who has created you and who loves you. God bless you all. Have a great evening, and I'll connect with you again tomorrow.